Hi guys, this is Wyatt Head King, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create this interior scene in Blender 2.6. So if we just before we get into it, take a look at the, uh, the actual file. Uh, you can see that it's quite a simple setup. We've got some furniture um, around the scene, got TV uh, and a lamp. So it's, it's really not too difficult. The main difficulty is the materials because we are rendering this in cycles so all the materials need to be done in the node editor. Although this is quite a rubbish example because it's only two nodes. Um, let's look at the... Um, this. Here we go, the floor. So I'm going to be teaching you how to do all this uh, in this tutorial series which will take up quite a few hours of your day so let's just get straight into it so let's start up a new scene in blender and I'm going to pause while I create the relevant files okay so I just uh, quickly saved it in a whole new selection of folders uh, I have to do this because of course this is a tutorial and I'm going to need to uh, uh, you know save it in its own tutorial folders okay so let's just get straight into it. So the first thing we're going to do is if I load up the image, which I also should have done. Um, hang on. Oops. Just here. Um, here we go. If I load up this image here, you can see that uh, oh, we can see our scene. And the first thing we're going to make is the actual room. So the floor, the walls, the windows, that sort of thing. So let's just get straight into that. Uh, the way I did this was quite simple. I just uh, went to front of view like this, went into edit mode with the cube, and put a loop, uh, a loop cut down the middle like so. Then I just moved it over a bit and brought up these vertices like that. Maybe just stretch this out a little bit. Uh, bring this side out. Then maybe out a bit, move this up, okay, and then I simply just got rid of the uh, faces apart from the ones going around the edge, like that. And now, if I just uh, select everything, press G, Z, and hold control, when I move this up, I should be able to get this directly on the red line, which should be the X axis, yep, the X axis. Okay, so, um, Right, uh, okay, I might just scale this up as well. Okay, maybe shrink the room so by bringing down the ceiling a bit. Okay, that'll do. And now I'm going to add in an array modifier, which I didn't do originally, but I wish I did. Okay, and we're going to have three. And I uh, just thought now maybe it, it just should bring in these a bit like that and there we go that's the beginning of our room so um, the reason why I did an array is because we're gonna have these windows here and uh, getting them to line up perfectly without an array is quite hard so that's why I've set up an array so just add one loop cut you don't need two but you can add them if you want and just bring it to the near the edge of this like that and now we're going to add in, uh, probably best to add these loop cuts in individually, so one here, and move it down like that, and another one here that goes near to the top. And with this, we can now extrude this out, like so, to get these window panels, and then we extrude them in, and then delete them, like that. You can see now we've got these nice holes where the window goes. Um, okay, so if we now add in in edit mode on this, add in a cube, just bring this into the room, scale it down, scale it down quite a bit, and then uh, scale it up on the z-axis, so it's just a nice thin but long thing like that. Move this up and put it where the window is make sure it lines up 
perfectly so that the edges are parallel to the window because otherwise it will look a bit strange so that doesn't have to be perfect it's not really going to be too obvious but just as long as it is parallel okay then just bring this over to uh, the actual edge so it's inside the edge of the window like that and then press P and choose selection and now uh, we've got these uh, it's still got the array modifier on it which is good we're going to uh, just increase this value here this one just uh, maybe add in four and what we're going to do is just line this up so that if you hold shift by the way it uh, goes a bit slower and you're just going to get it so that the two on the edge are inside the window frame like that that way you know that these two here are well you know they're the same distance apart as each other and as well as the edges so it looks normal then we can just apply that and then get rid of the two at the end okay and now if we uh, look inside the room from where our camera is going to be roughly it should look good but now if you just join this up with the rest like that it's now looking quite good and if you want to you can also just bring these down like so so that they are uh, not looking messy in the viewport okay so that's good enough now if we just go into front view press control alt number pad zero to get the camera here we can just start positioning it um, something like that okay and I think we can apply the array modifier now oh um no we don't want to do that quite yet uh, because I've also got uh, these uh, yeah, these beams going across the top, so you may as well put that in the array as well. So let's add in um, a cube again, and let's just move this over to another layer, like so, so we can just model this. Okay, so I'm going to chop this in half and use the mirror modifier for this. So add in a mirror. Okay and turn on clipping and now I'm going to add in uh, two, three, four loop cuts like that I'm going to select these two in the middle scale them up on the z-axis and then bring in these things like so and that creates this nice beam shape and we can now just uh, scale this up on the y-axis to make it nice and long and then probably scale it down as well so there's, oh, yeah, uh, scale it down and then move it in, like so, and that way it can just uh, get smaller as well. Alright, so now let's move this back into where the room is, and I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, because, again, I didn't actually use an array to do this, let's just scale it down and increase its x-axis scale, that's probably a bit too long. I'm going to scale it down again. Hmm. These aren't going to be particularly big beams. Okay. Um, and let's actually move it over to this side, like so. And then join it up with. Oh, apply the mirror first. And then join it up with the rest of the object. And there we go. We now have some beams. Now, for this, it is important that we get the x axis scaling correct because otherwise when you look out the window you just can see these things so let's just bring them in so that they're not actually being seen outside the window in fact let's make it so that they're you know very close because otherwise you might get some shadows or something okay and there we go that's step two complete I'm just bring the camera back and also in the camera settings I'm going to change the focal length to about 25 because it doesn't really have to be zoomed in too much because this is an interior scene okay so something like that should be good now we can just apply this in fact no before we apply the array modifier I just want to 
get some placeholder materials in. So select all the window frames as well as the uh, window, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, uh, I forgot what you call them, these dividers. Here we go. And yep, just make sure they're all selected. And we can add in a new material. Oh yeah, I call this wall, grey wall. And then add in another one, call this window frame. And then assign that to these things like this. And then uh, if we go into cycles render, uh, we can just set the under settings, bring the viewport color down to a black like that, or like dark grey even, doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect the actual render at all, it's just uh, in the 3D viewport. And, uh, oh yeah, we're also going to need to uh, start getting the wall here, so add in another material, call this brick wall, assign that, and then the floor, uh, like that. Another material, call this floor, and assign that as well. Okay, so now we can assign the, or apply the array modifier like that, so it's all one object. Oh, I've got to give one for these beams. Just select all these beams, press Control L, like that, so it selects the entire object. Give this a new material, call it beam, and assign that. Okay, uh, so now we're going to need to create the face at the end, which is quite simple, I suppose. Um, what we need to do is, if we just hide everything apart from these vertices at the back, uh, um, might take some time just to hide those. There we go. Um, you can now see how uh, this. Well, you might be able to see how this is going to work. We're actually going to just make an N gone here and here because even though you're not really supposed to render things as an N gone, it's it will help a bit. Well, in fact, um, actually no, we don't have to. We can uh, create a face here. So select these two vertices like that. Press Control J. Oh no, not Control J. Just J on its own. And then same here. So it's uh, loads of triangular faces, and we can even join them up by pressing Alt J. Oh, no, apparently not. What about here? No, okay. Let's just leave them how it is. And with this thing here, we can add in. Uh, press. You can just add in a loop cut, but it's only going to be one vertice. So, or vertex even. So let's just move that roughly to there and then make a face there. That's important, they're lined up nicely for when we unwrap this later. So this is quite a nasty mesh, but um, it's, it does the job. Okay, so that's fine. And just make sure actually that these have got the correct materials on them. So here should be um, brick wall and this should be grey wall okay and just change the viewport colors a bit so that uh, we can see them a bit better like for what they are we'll make that orange or something um, oh it seems that this side doesn't actually have any materials on it so we need to select all the faces along this side and assign them to the brick wall material and there we go, we're not actually going to put a face on this side um, simply because we don't need to and there we go so uh, that's part one of the uh, interior design tutorial series so uh, thanks for watching comment, rate, subscribe, uh, follow me on twitter um, and thanks for watching and goodbye.